today's marketplace, we often do pose. Amen. We often do pose. And, uh, you know, the purpose of the pose is to get an understanding of what the popular opinions of the people might be. Amen. What the popular opinion of the people might be. And, uh, and that's what we have just quickly, that's what we've quickly done here, done here today. We've gotten a, we've done a quick poll. Did I, did I miss anyone? Amen. 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 Somebody out there still trying to figure, figure it out. No one trying to figure it out. Amen. 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 See, some of you never done a poll before. Amen. 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 Jerry, go ahead and give me that clip. Give me the clip real quick. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let's look at the scripture. Let's look at the scriptures real quickly. Beginning at Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. We'll begin at verse 13. Verse 13 of Luke 16. Luke 16. We'll begin at verse 13. Verse 13 of Luke 16. Luke, take us all the way to verse 13, please. Verse 13. Matthew, I'm sorry, Matthew 16, Matthew 16, Matthew 16, amen, somebody's paying attention, Matthew 16, real quickly, Matthew 16, okay, would you please stand for the reading of the word of God, the Bible says when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is. They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the 
prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. May the Lord God have a blessing to the reading of his sacred scriptures this morning as we honor him and we worship him and we acknowledge who he is in Christ Jesus. Who do you say he is? Who is he? To you this morning, this morning, who is he? Who is he to you in our, uh, in our, in our scripture text? We see Jesus asking two significant questions. One of the questions is more of a group question. You see, it is one thing for the, for the group to answer a question together. You've been in situations and uh, a question was raised to the group and and when you're with a group, you can hide behind this person, you can hide behind that person and just kind of go along with the, with, the, with, with the majority. But Jesus challenged his disciples to take a poll. He said, tell me what you're hearing in the marketplace, and um, and what we just simply did, some of you kind of messed up my message a little bit because you didn't follow instructions. It said, circle only one. I mean, <laughs> and uh, so in our poll uh, today, this is what the people in the Way Fellowship Church is saying about who he is. Uh, some maintain that he's the counselor. Some said he's my best friend. Some call him, in fact, we had uh, two here that called him Lord. We have two that said that he's my refuge. Uh, have one that calls him their redeemer. Uh, and we have two that simply says he's the, he's the Christ. He's the Christ. We have one that's call him the provider and we have some that uh, uh, just wrote it in and call him uh, their conqueror and then there's a few that says he's all the above he's just all the above I, I can't zero in on one he's simply all the above but a question be uh, could be a point or question could be a form of a, 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 a subject under discussion. Uh, and so Jesus raises these two questions, one to the, the people as a whole. Who do they say I am? What are you hearing in the marketplace? What are you hearing in the community? And that part did not phase me a, a, a bit because so often what everybody else is saying uh, should not be of extremely importance to you. You really should be concerned about what you have to say about this subject. And, and so Jesus in his, in, in his ministry, as his disciples had been with him somewhat close to three years, Jesus raised a very 
pointed question to each of them. Pointed question to each one of them at that point in time. It was all, they were all, it was all 12 of them there. And they were startled by the question. It was not a, a, a big issue of them telling him what they were saying about Jesus in the community. You read it. Some said that he was just a prophet. Some uh, uh, said he was that of uh, similar to uh, uh, Elijah or, uh, or, or Jeremiah. How they, uh, uh, in his society at that time, began to put Jesus into the same category as, er- as earthly men. But when it was time for the disciples as a whole, uh, disciples individually, to answer the question for themselves, it became difficult. Life as we know it, it, uh, 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 it throws at us all types of questions. All types of, uh, of, of questions uh, and, 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 and questions that causes us to have to analyze before we get an answer. Uh, you see, a question, uh, it could be uh, an, an, an exam uh, that someone is uh, 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 taking. A, a question could be in the form of an interview. A question could be incorporated into some uh, a meaningful discussion. A question could be something that you have to chew on and dissect just for a little while before you give your answer. Some questions, people of God, just not easy to answer. I, I could possibly come up with a question today to some of you that will cause you to scratch your head and say, well, Pastor, I can't, I can't give you um, a quick answer on that one because I got to give some thought to it. I got to think about it for a few minutes. Some of you say, well, well, Pastor, let me go home and, and digest that one before I even give you a response. And the question that is in front of us today is that level of a question. It's a question that defines your life as to where you are today. It defines your life. It it sets the course of your life. That very question, people of God, that very question is the it's a, it's a centerpiece of the, of the hard mark of your life. How you answer the question. Because it's not based on any polls. It's not based on the, the, the opinions of the majority. Uh, it's really based on where you are right now. So the question is who is he to you? Pastor didn't give you a question that you all can answer as a whole, but but who is he to you? Who is he to you? Who is he to you today? A question about it that that, that comes about in our lives. This question is greater than any question that you can pose to anyone else. Or you can pose about your children. Uh, will the kids turn out right? What will tomorrow bring? What will I grow up to be? Uh, what am I going to do with my life as it, it sits before me today? Will I die? When I die, will I reach heaven's door. Uh, You see, life is full of questions. But in our text before us today, we see Jesus asking two simple types of questions. The first type of question, uh, uh, again, we we deal with as a group, but but this one, this, this, this last one here, shocked the living daylights. 
out of the disciples. You can almost feel the tense in the room. They didn't make a big issue about what the popular opinions were. But, but when Jesus said, but, but who do you say that I am? Who am I to you? Who am I to you? And, and, and I know that you can get real religious and just answer that question real quickly. But, 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 but that ain't what we're here. We're, we're not, it's not about religion. It's, it, it, it's not about uh, uh, some, something that you've been practicing. Uh, something that you've been participating. Some motions that you've been going through. But this is a, a deep-seated, this is a deep-seated issue that not everybody can really answer real quickly. You see, many have claimed to be saved, but very few has literally been converted. Literally converted. There is a, there is a difference be, between being, be, be, being saved and, and there's a difference in, to, to be converted. Now they both should work hand in hand, but unfortunately that's not the case. In most Christian circles, that, 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 that many give their life to Jesus, but, but when it comes down time to, uh, surrender their past and, 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 and go in the opposite direction, that many hold on, hold on, hold on to the past and say, Jesus, I'll give you my heart, but, uh, I, 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 I'll commit and call you my savior, but, I got to hold on to these other things because these other things are still real good to me. These other things, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm still feeling, I'm still feeling it. So I want to hold on to it. So the, so the change never took place. But this second question that we see in verse 16, this, this second question in verse 16 Jesus says uh, uh, to the disciples, who do you say that I am? And, 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 and we find only one of the twelve speaking up. Now before you too quickly give Peter a high five and say, Peter, you nailed it, you nailed it, you nailed it. Read the scriptures very carefully. Read the scripture very carefully here. Was it Peter's doing to answer the question? Or was there something else that, 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 that came upon Peter that gave him the answer to the question? There's a, a great mystery here, this whole passage of scripture. A great mystery here, people of God. Because these were twelve. That hung out with him 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which is why I'm telling you, if you're, if you're quick to answer the question, be very sure you know what the question really is, because I am not talking about the mere fact that you were baptized when you were five years old. I, I'm not talking about the mere fact that your granddaddy and your grandmother uh, were preachers of the gospel. I, I'm not talking about the fact that you've never ever missed a Sunday in service. That's not what I'm talking about. But there is a significant reason why none of the disciples can answer the question. They was with him three. You would think that if anybody could nail it, that all 12 of them would nail it and say this is the answer to the question. But the Bible says that Peter was the one that spoke up. But notice what Jesus says to Peter. He said that what you just said, it didn't come from your flesh. It didn't come from any type of head knowledge, head knowledge, head knowledge. He said, but it came to you through the revelation, through the inspiration 
of the Holy Spirit of God. Now you say that Peter really believe it? I think there's another question mark there. But what came out was the real truth that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Jesus was a Christ, the, the Son of the the Son of the Living God. He was it. He was it. He was it. And, and, and so the so the Lord throughout His ministry that this was a point that He wanted to bring forward to the disciples. This was the, this was the point that He wanted the disciples to understand. That I am not like the rest of you. That I'm not like the other prophets. I'm not like Jeremiah. Although he had great compassion and he, he went around weeping as he preached. I'm not like uh, Jeremiah. Although uh, Elijah called down fire from heaven. Don't put me in that category. But I am, he said, I am the, the Christ, the son of the living God. That Peter didn't ask, answer that question. It was the Holy Spirit that gave them, the disciples, the answer to the question. Read it for yourself. It was the inspiration of the, of the Spirit. It just, Peter just so happens to reside in the position of being the spokesperson for those disciples. And so he tells them, he says, I am the Christ. Who is the Christ? Uh, who is the Christ? Have you ever thought for a minute? You uh, Sometimes we're so quickly to call him the Christ, but do you really know who the Christ really is? The, the Christ in, 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 in Greek and in, in Hebrew, they, they translate him to be the, the anointed one. The Messiah. The, the anointed one and the, and the Messiah. Now from this point in time, the Jewish people of that day, they were waiting. They were waiting very patiently. They were waiting with great enthusiasm for guess who? The Messiah. And here, Jesus raises the question in front of his 12 disciples and, and, and God reveals it out of their mouth. It was very important that it did not come out of the mouth of Jesus, but that it would come out of the mouth of one of those disciples. And so finally, it is revealed for the very first time in scripture. It is revealed that the, that the Messiah that everybody been looking for, the, the Messiah that had, that they had prophesied that he will come and, and be a king, the, the Messiah that they were waiting on is now revealed to the disciples. They were Jewish. Folks, the disciples, they were Jewish folks, and it is, is revealed to them. Now, if you struggle with anything in the Christian faith, one of the things that should define real quickly Jesus' position and how authentic his life really is, and that is that that, that his life as a, as a Messiah is a fulfillment of prophecy. Fulfillment of prophecy. That his life had been prophesied all the way back in the early part of the, of, of the Old Testament. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 7.14. He said uh, that he'll be born of a virgin. 
Malachi prophesied Malachi 5, 2. He said, born at Bethlehem. David uh, prophesied and, uh, and, and said that in, in Psalm 72, that it'd be presented with gifts. Jeremiah prophesied and said that, that Herod will kill children in Bethlehem. Uh, 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 Isaiah prophesied again and said that we'll be an heir to the throne of David. David prophesied and said that he'll be betrayed by a friend. Zechariah prophesied and said that he'll be sold for how many pieces of silver? <laughs> 30 pieces of silver. Uh, Isaiah says, uh, uh, prophesy in Isaiah 50, he said, we'll be spat on and struck. Uh, 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 David prophesied again saying that, that his hands and his feet will be pierced. And, and we see that in Psalm 22. So before he arrived, they prophesied. The early uh, 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 prophets, they prophesied, the minor prophets, the major prophets, that everybody got a piece of prophesying about the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. But now Jesus is ready to unveil it to his 12 disciples. And he does not tell them himself. But the Holy Spirit comes on Peter and Peter speaks it out. Peter speaks it out and, and Peter speaks it out and say, thou art the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And the reason why I maintain very earlier that, that, that we could not answer that question too quickly is not answering the question just to get the question right. Some of you answer the question just to hopefully get it right, but it's not about getting it right. It's what's really going on on the inside of you. Amen. It's what's really going on on the inside of you. If we open you up this morning, will we really see that he is truly your Messiah? Will we find it in there? And we know that God is the greatest surgeon of all time. But it's important for you to know that through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, when Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, he was saying that what had been prophesied is now here. What's been prophesied is now here. You know, I know, know a lot of uh, uh, Jewish folks that are still looking for the Messiah. But here we see it in scripture. The Messiah people of God has come. He's here. But when you look at the, the word Christ, the anointed one, the M Messiah, it embodies every characteristic of God, and it, and it embodies every characteristics of God. Do you know that Jesus' birth is the only birth of a leader that everybody was expecting? His coming, he's the only leader. He's the only leader that, that, that said that I am coming back. And he's the only leader that everybody's expecting and it only leader that has been, it's been written about. 
And there's so much going on, people of God, in, in our era today to, to denounce the Bible and to, and, and to find things where the scriptures uh, contradict themselves. But I want to tell you today, people of God, you have to submit yourself to the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God, no man can manipulate. No man can touch. And, and it's beautiful that, that you can read the scriptures, but it takes the Holy Spirit of God to give you revelations and, and to give you interpretation so that you can answer it. And that's exactly what happened with, 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 with Peter when he responded. He responded through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It was not based on what was in Peter. It was based on what the Spirit of the Lord wanted to make, be made known at that given time. The Holy Spirit ministry on this earth is an awesome ministry, people of God. And no man can manipulate it. No man can, can misinterpret it. That it works, it works on the inside of you. It operates on the inside of you. It cannot be manipulated. So don't let anyone deceive you into thinking that Jesus is not who he say he is. Yet there are things uh, uh, listed in the history books that in our lifetime, I believe, will be changed. But don't let anyone convince you to deviate from this book to some other book. The greatest mistake greatest mistake that I see today in so many overly zealous Christians is that they feel that there is much, much more and they go outside of the book into another book and within a short period of time you learn that they're spending more time reading some history book than to read his book, which is our history book. His book is his story. Amen. His story. His Story is his story. That's where we need to spend our time. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Who is he to you? It's a center question for us today. So when Peter said that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, what are you saying to us, Peter? What are you, what are you, what are you saying to us? And, and I think if we had Peter here today again, Peter only speaking through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, Peter would say he's the, the, the prince of peace. You say, well, Peter, what, 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 what else is, what, what else is he? He said, Peter would say he's the, he's the mighty God, my brother. He's the mighty God. Wait a minute, Peter, you just said he's the prince of peace. And, and, and now you're saying he's the mighty God. Peter would say there is much, much more. There is much, much more. He's uh, wonderful. He's wonderful. Wait a minute, Peter. How can he be the prince of peace? And how can he be this mighty God and be wonderful? But, but Peter would say, I just got started. I, I got a whole list uh, to describe uh, the Christ, the son of the living God, the Christ, the, the son of the living God, the Christ, the son of the living God. And I believe the spirit of God has come by this morning. To wake us up and to, to alert us that you can no longer just quickly answer the question, but you need to do some spiritual searching within you to make sure, be very sure, be very sure that he resides in you. He's not just a Lord in you, but he's the the Lord over you. That he's just not a king in you. But he's the king, the king, the king in you. That he's not just a, another savior. But he's the savior, the savior. There is a difference. There is a difference. You see what got Jesus in trouble on the earth that he didn't tell people, he says, I am a way. I am a way to get to God. If he would have said, I am a way 
society would have been okay with him. If it had just said, I'm a savior, they'd have still been fine. I am a king. You know, there are other kings. They wouldn't have had a problem with this. But what got Jesus into trouble is when he began to say, I am the Christ, the son of the living God. I am the way. And so when you look at this, this, this text very carefully, you see embodied in the word, I am the Christ, I am the anointed one, I am the Messiah. You see the lion of the tribe of Judah. You see the, the word of life. You see the, 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 the root of, uh, of David. You see the day spring. You see the, the word of life. You see the Lord of all. You see our advocate, you see our alpha and our omega, our author, our our finisher. You see the great I am, the, 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 the king of kings, the rock of salvation, the morning star, the, the, the chief shepherd, the head of everything. It all embodies the name, the Christ. The Messiah. This is it. This is it. This is it. And this is what the the Jews, even today, they're waiting on him when he was already revealed in the life of the disciples. That he is the only one, people of God, can genuinely change you. He is the only one that can genuinely heal and deliver you and set you free. You see, there are so many other things that, that, that you can do in this, this life that can temporarily make a, make a change. But he is the only one that can make a permanent change in your life. He really is the only one that can really convert you completely and make you brand new in him. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And people of God, if, if, if change has not taken place inside of you, if change is not going on around you, perhaps Perhaps, perhaps he's not in you. Because what separates Jesus from all of the other prophets that he said when Jesus' first message to us, his first sermon, when he shows up on the scene for the very first time, this was his first sermon. His first sermon to each one of us, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, people of God, that he didn't come uh, uh, to participate in the religious uh, uh, philosophies and the, and the religious activities of the day. He came to change you. If change has not taken place On the inside of you, you cannot today call him uh, the Messiah. You you can't call him uh, the Messiah. You can't call him the great I am. Because he cannot be the great I am, the almighty God to you, if he's not reigning supreme in your life. If it's a force, if it's a hassle, To read your Bible, then there's a heart problem somewhere. That means you ain't been changed. If if it's a if it's a hassle to come to church, you ain't been changed, people of God. That he has to take place. It should never be a drag to to wake up and read your Bible. It should be excitement. Should never be a drag. Oh, it's prayer time. It's six thirty. So, Sasanya, it's prayer time. It should never be a drag to any of you if he is really the Christ. That means you're happy 
that he's calling all the shots. You're happy that he's the ruler of your life. You're, you're, you're happy that he's the great I am. It's not a drag. The Christian life should be the most exciting thing that you have ever got involved with. If it's a drag, something's wrong. Something has not taken place in you. It cannot be like that. You know, Jeremiah, he was so excited about his service to the Lord. And he says, you know, God's word, he says, it's like fire, shut up, shut up, locked up in me that I can't hold back. Where is the excitement, people of God? Where is the excitement if, if, if Jesus was here today? He wouldn't call a poll. That he would simply say as our, as our, as our uh, title would say to each one of us. He would say, who do you, who do you, who do you, who do you say that I am? He, there, there's no time to, to talk about your, 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 your background and, and, and how long you've been involved in church and how long you've been involved in ministry. That's not the question. But the question is, who do you, who do you say that he is? Who do you say that he is? If they cut you, will you bleed Jesus? Or you will bleed something else. Has he become the, the core of your being? The, the, the core of your being? Now I'm not trying to bust our bubble. But I'm, I'm trying to get you to see this, this revelation. That, that, that the 12 disciples couldn't get it. They couldn't get it. But what Jesus was interested in more than anything else. More than anything else. Is that they recognize that the one that had been prophesied by Jeremiah, by by Isaiah, by David. That he was staring them in the face. He was staring them in the face. Who do you? He said, who do you? How about you, James? How about you, John the Beloved? How, how, how about you guys? You, you guys been with me all this time. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And people of God, the question could not be answered. That you could hear a pin drop. And while so many were, were, I'm sure, very quickly to give Peter a pat on the back. Jesus busts Peter's bubble. <laughs> and he says, Peter, flesh and blood, didn't you get that? <laughs> that ain't your answer, Peter. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit gave you that answer. But it was proper for it to come out of one of Jesus' followers. It was proper to come out of one of Jesus' followers' mouth. That you can look at the, at the, at the disciples' life that they didn't get it, people of God. But we got enough of information now. We must get it. We must get it. Your salvation cannot be based on Your head knowledge, your salvation, and your your relationship with Jesus, it got to be genuine. It got to be all deep on the inside of you people of God. And the question before us today requires that every single one of us, you got to dig deeper. Go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. You got to go deeper if it's not there. You can't answer the question, but you can do something about the question. The greatest tragedy that has swept our churches today 
is that we have so much head knowledge, but it's not on the inside of us. It's, it's not on the inside of us. You know, the Bible talks about what's on the inside of you. You see, it's what's on the inside of you that, that has great control of you. The Bible says out of the abundance, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speak, your mouth speak. You ever notice some people uh, that everything is fine, but when things go wrong, they begin to speak bad things. <laughs> you know, you get them really upset. And, and those that like to use profanity, when you get them upset, that's a clue right there. Leave them alone, leave them alone, leave them alone. You, you don't woke up something. But it comes out. Why does it come out? Why does it come out? Because that's what's deep on the, on, on the inside of you. And what I'm telling you today is that, is that Jesus wants to be the Christ, not just another Christ. During Jesus' era, there were many that walked around claiming to be Jesus Christ. I just want you all to know that. that there are many, there are many duplicates of Jesus. You say, well, pastor, how, how do you know that? Well, when they were in a crowd, Judas was told, Judas was told to find him, go to him and kiss him on the cheek. They were looking for Judas because there were so many that, that, that dressed like Jesus, that, that, that looked like Jesus, that was not Jesus. But the, but the signature, the, the proof that it was Jesus is that they kept their eyes on Judas. And so Judas kissed him on the cheek and that was a clear indication that he was the one that came to be the Christ. Jesus told the folks, he says, if you have seen me, you've seen the father. Oh, that made him upset. That made him upset. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. When he told them that, that, that I can forgive you of your sins, that, that, that mass him up right there. You see, so often in the, in, in, in the Christian circle that we pay so much attention. On the majority, on what the polls got to say. Well, when it comes down to your faith, it is not about what, what, what the rest of the folks in here had to say about Jesus. It's about what you got to say about Jesus. Is he really on the inside of you? See, if we can get him, if we can truly, people of God, get him out of your, out of your, the, the head knowledge, and get him in you, get him deposited in you, is when the change can occur. Did you know he's the best surgeon? He's the best physician. But some of us have not even allowed him to go to work. Let him go to work in you. Our lives are supposed to be transformed. Our lives are supposed to be that of representing a new creation in Christ. That's what our lives are supposed to represent. But you cannot have other things going on in you that's competing. And you're allowing it to take first position in you. Nothing is up for grabs in you. Some of you need to uh, uh, begin to wear a shirt that simply says, sold out <laughs> that everything you get involved in that you let it know from the beginning don't come in trying to be number one number two because i am sold out i wonder to there there's somebody in the house this morning that recognize that he's the christ the son of the living god in you and you are willing to sell out for him there was a there was a, a t-shirt that came out some Time ago, I, I wanted to get one, just see what kind of reaction. It says, Jesus freak. <laughs> I just find that so cool, amen? A Jesus freak. <laughs> you know, there are many things that you can be accused of, but I ain't got a problem being called a Jesus freak, okay? 
I mean, there's all kind of other freaks out there. So what kind of freak you want to be? Amen. <laughs> I'll be the Jesus freak. You can play with something else. <laughs> and so it's great. So Peter's words said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And God pronounces, because Peter was willing to speak up, God pronounces. He said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father in heaven. The one that everybody longed for has finally revealed himself has finally made himself known, finally made himself known. And you see, when when people talk about the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, and we say the gospel is the good news, and and why the gospel is the good news, but the gospel really is about the, the working, the workings of Jesus in the lives of mankind. And so I came by this morning to encourage you To allow the workings of Jesus to work in your life because he wants to deliver you. He wants to take the the, the, the boringness out of uh, of serving him. He, he He wants to bring forth excitement in you. Again, one pure examination that something is wrong spiritually. When you struggle and you suffer. You say, well, I'm doing this because I know I'm supposed to do this. That's not how it's supposed to work, people of God. Not because you're supposed to do it. You do it because of the joy that is within you. It's a joy to serve the Lord. It's a joy to read his word. It's a joy to worship him. It's a joy to fellowship with his people. It has to be joy. If it's a struggle, then something is wrong with the heart. Something's wrong with the heart. When David saw that his heart was not working right when it came down to serving God, David didn't play around with it. What did he say? Give me a new heart. (laughs) That's right. They give me a new heart. This heart ain't working right. Give me a new heart. And so, people of God, the question is before you this morning. Who is he? To you, you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor, we're all Christians in here. How can that question be for you? Because I've learned a long time ago that what we say with our flesh is not really What's going on spiritually? So this question is not to your flesh. It's not to your head knowledge. It's to your the the spirit that's deep inside of you. Who is he, people of God, to you? Who is he, people of God, to you? Is he just Christ? Is he just Christ? You see, I understand why the people... Go crazy about wanting Christmas to be taken out of stores. I understand that. <laughs> because everywhere you go, it's Christ mass. It's Christ. I understand why they don't want it there. <laughs> it's conviction. It's conviction. And, and that's what the world should do. Okay? You ain't, you ain't in this. But, but those of us that truly have him on the inside of us, a change must take place. Deliverance, it, it must happen. You cannot be torn around with the same thing 20 years. And he's the Lord? Come on. If he's the Christ, he's the Messiah. No, if you're still playing around with it, he ain't there. Because he came to 
deliver us. He came to set the captives free. free. He came to make us whole in him. He came to take over authority of our lives. And come against anything that does not line itself up with him. You see, if he's not Lord of all, then he's not Lord at all. See, I can only preach this to Christians. He is not a part-time lover. (laughs) You can't be with him today when things are going great and be with somebody tomorrow. That he wants all of you people of God. All of you. All of you. And and my challenge to every one of you today. Is to commit yourself. To giving all of you. To him. It's simply taking a. Drawing a circle. In the floor. And stepping inside of the circle. And saying, Lord, everything inside of this circle, I give to you. I give to you. You see, when you get to that point, then truly you can answer the question. Who is he to me? Well, he's my Christ. He's my Messiah. He's my, you see, you take ownership, you take ownership and complete control of this. You know, back in the, back in the uh, mid seventies, and I'm I'm through, back in the mid seventies, we had this, uh, it was a fad that went around that everybody was getting their clothes tailored made. Uh, That, that, that fad kind of went, went, went away, but it was very, it was, it, was, it was very popular. Any of you remember back in the days of, of getting your clothes tailor-made? I mean, I guess I'm the senior person in here because uh, I ain't getting no knock. But it was real. Come on, Bobby, help me out. Help me out. Now, you were around. You were around. You had some tailor-made stuff. And, and, and it, was real, it was real cool. You can get your initials kind of put in front. You get little pockets down here. Uh, if, you didn't want any back, if you didn't want any pockets in the back. You don't have to get any pockets. You just want one pocket there. They put one, one, one pocket there. But it was perfect. When you put it on, the, 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 uh, the, the waist would be perfect. The, the lift would be perfect. Everything was just designed specially for you. And uh, all kind of designs and, and everything. I think we still got some old pictures of me with my teller made clothes on. But... But it was, it, was, it was very nice. But it was designed specifically. It was personally designed specifically for you. Well, that's what your relationship with Jesus. He's designed it. He's tailored it specifically for you. You see, when I had something tailored, as I went off, my, my younger brothers, they tried to wear stuff that was tailored for me. But maybe they didn't have the, 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 the tush that I used to have. Amen. <laughs> uh, maybe they didn't have the waist. that it, it, it didn't work. It didn't work for them because it was for me. And so somebody else's relationship won't work for you. You got to work out your own. You got to work out your own because it's been designed specifically for you. It's personal. It's been tailored. Just for you. Get your eyes off everybody else. And put your eyes on Jesus. Because the relationship has been designed just for you. Who do you, people of God, say that he is? Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, today. As we humbly, Lord God, submit ourselves to you, recognizing, Lord God, that you require our very best, that you want our very best. And Lord God, I pray today, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that everyone here, Lord God, will simply draw an invisible circle 
and say, Lord God, whatever is inside of this circle, I give to you 100%. All over this place, all over this place, all over this place. Whatever, whatever you require of me, I give it unto you. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, unto thee. I surrender my all unto you. Lord God, you are the anointed one. You are the Messiah. And today, Lord God, I pray on the behalf of these great people, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that our hearts would be open, that you would be allowed to invade our hearts, that lives will be changed, prayers will be answered, breakthroughs and deliverance, Lord God, will come our way as a result of you working, doing a great work in us. Help us today, Lord God all over this place to surrender, to surrender, to surrender ourselves to the Messiah, to the great I am, to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the great and mighty God. Help us today, Lord God, to surrender, surrender, surrender all over this place. Surrender, surrender, surrender our lives unto you. Many have been saved, Lord God. But perhaps quite a few have been truly converted. Do a great work in us today, Lord God. Every head bowed, every eye shut, no one looking around. Maybe you're here today. You say, Pastor, I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior and Lord. And I desire to do so right now. Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you, would you pray for me? No one looking around. No one looking around. Just... My eyes, my eyes only, people of God. You've never ever accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, and you desire to do so right now. I just want you to lift your hand up. I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you, but I just need to know who I'm praying for. Just You've never ever accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord. I just want you to shoot your hands up. Shoot your hand up. All over this place. All over this place. All over this place. All over this place. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name today. And Lord God, we say to you, just like David said to you, create in us a clean heart, O Lord, and renew the right spirit that is within us. Help us, Lord God, that as you speak to us in the middle of the night, Lord God, that we'll be able to say, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God to us. Bless us, Lord God, and keep us in your watchful care. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said, amen. Amen. Who do you, who do you say that he is? Who do you say that he is, people of God?